Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about Jurassic World Dominion and why I think this could be the movie that changes the Jurassic Park series in some pretty big and important ways. Now the whole reason I even began to think about this subject in the first place was due to a little behind the scenes project that I was pitching to a couple of friends of mine who have actually worked on the Jurassic World movies before in the past. I had the idea to actually edit both The Lost World and Jurassic Park 3 together into one movie just for fun to see how everything flowed together and as a little fun side project. I think Jack Ewins is actually working on it right now and uh, it's pretty interesting but anyways back to the subject at hand. While I was talking about this with them and explaining how I thought Alan Grant's role could weave in and out of the events of the second film in an edit, it kind of hit me like a ton of bricks that Jurassic World Dominion is going to be the only film in the franchise to be a legitimate sequel to the first film as far as the characters and story are concerned full stop. And it wasn't just the fact that the new Jurassic World movie was bringing back Laura Dern, Sam Neill, and Jeff Goldblum either because I soon ran it through my head that this was kind of the only Jurassic Park sequel that would also be a legitimate sequel to every other film that came before it. I mean, yeah, both Jurassic World movies are tied together rather nicely. They're built as a trilogy, but JP3 is so casual and standalone. And then you've got The Lost World, which didn't have really many of the people from JP1 at all besides Hammond and Malcolm, and it was set on a totally different island. And even then, the events of that film wouldn't really get followed up on spiritually until Fallen Kingdom. So Dominion is in a lot of ways going to be the very first film in this franchise to actually act as a true continuation of every other film that came before it. And I thought that was kind of interesting considering we've had four other Jurassic Park sequel films and none of them really did that. But this wasn't the only reason I was thinking about the film changing the franchise because I also know that this is going to be the first official story that is being told with the focus of dinosaurs having already escaped in the mainland for the actual crux of its story and the main driving idea in the new film. Now we did have the San Diego incident at the end of The Lost World, but that got cleaned up pretty quick when everything was said and done. And then you also have everything on the mainland and Fallen Kingdom, but again, that was all delegated to the confines of a mansion. So Dominion is taking a big original turn as far as dinosaur location and world setup or continuation as well. So what does this mean? for the franchise. I mean, if Dominion comes out and delivers a solid experience for fans all around the world, then what does Universal do with the Jurassic Park property after that? We can't just look at what the filmmakers and fans have said anymore because we have the reality of this pandemic still affecting the film industry that needs to be taken into consideration. So there's more than just story progression that we would have to realistically think about here, especially in regards to how these stories get funded in the first place. Well, with the opportunity to have Alan Grant, Owen Grady, Claire Deering, Ian Malcolm, and Ellie Sattler all joining one another for what we assume will be the end of the Jurassic World trilogy, I think you automatically have what will be looked at as the end of an era when it comes to these dinosaur films. And the reason I say this is because I could see Universal going in a direction that would be much more suited for TV or streaming when it comes to how they want to actually continue the franchise going forward. I think it will be a miracle at this point if Dominion breaks a billion, and I don't just say that as someone who sounds pessimistic, but rather because there hasn't been a movie that's been able to do that since 2019. So if we actually go the whole streaming route or maybe even do something like Battle at Big Rock, but more on a serialized scale, I think that could prove to be a very beneficial thing for Universal and Amblin in the long run. There's also the opportunity to have legacy characters appear more frequently after we've gotten the adventure of them getting to know and catch up with one another in Dominion. So I could see a new cast of characters coming in with a few episodes or scenes where Owen or Ian Malcolm shows up to provide some much needed context for what's going on in the world of Jurassic. Similar to how Star Trek The Next Generation did with its older characters. But what I really think will be a big defining moment for this franchise really is the fact that we're getting all five of the main Jurassic World protagonists together in a film for the first time in the series history and following up on a story that like came right before this one. 
I've said this before, but when it comes to how Jurassic Park has handled sequels, I think that the decision to sideline Alan Grant, Ian Malcolm, or Ellie Sattler in the first few entries, whether it be The Lost World or Jurassic Park 3, was just way too out of left field for an audience to really tolerate. I don't think anyone would try that with a big budgeted franchise today, and they interestingly treated Jurassic like that up until 2015, which it's kind of fascinating to think about looking back. Instead of crafting an overarching plot and story with heaps of character development happening over the course of a few films, we got interchangeable protagonists that's not too dissimilar to something like Tremors 2 or Beneath the Planet of the Apes. And that's just so different to what you would expect when you take a step back and look at the franchise as a whole. And we're finally getting that in Dominion. It's just so weird for me. I mean, if I was an executive producer or a bigwig at Hollywood in 1994 or 1995, there's no way a script would cross my desk that wouldn't have Alan Grant and that wouldn't have Ellie, or even Lex and Tim in like bigger roles, let alone all of this other stuff on the island, the Dilophosaurus for God's sakes. It's so weird that we never got like a sequel sequel to Jurassic Park 1. And I know it's been a long time coming, but at least we're finally getting a legit sequel to JP1, The Lost World, JP3, Jurassic World, and Fallen Kingdom. What I think Jurassic World Dominion will really deliver on is giving audiences the very first Jurassic Park sequel that actually feels like a direct continuation of not only the first film, but also everything else that came after it. That's not really happened yet, and hopefully, this will mean the further building of a Jurassic World in the future with the studio's plans to branch out and tell more stories after 2022, like that live action series we heard about. Either way, I think that after this movie, fans and audiences are going to look at the entire set of films in a very, very different way. I don't see any way around that. That just seems obvious at this point. But anyways, guys, those are all just my own thoughts on the subject matter. Now, whatever yours happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my in-gen executives. I'd also like to thank all of my parkers and in-gen hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that you all continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching today's video and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing me again. See you all in the next video, guys, and as always, Take it easy.